tell me how, you know, for starters, how are you doing here? I know this has been kind of a weird scenario where you didn't know, is it postponed? Now it is. Now you're kind of in limbo. What's what's day-to-day -day life and how are you managing unsure of when your next game will be? Yeah, I mean, it's wild. Um, I'm actually driving out to our river house in Arizona. The water's warming up, so I figured I could start swimming slowly but surely out there. I'm looking forward to that, and luckily I have we have that house out there to – kind of change the scenes a little bit but um I think we all understand that this is crazy times and our coaches and our teammates have been really lenient with one another obviously we have to stay fit and when we do have the opportunity to come back we're gonna obviously go in and kick butt but right now it's all about slowing down and you know just trying to enjoy the little things luckily Newport the beaches are still open so I've been spending a lot of time in the ocean which has been a saving grace for me but there's rumor and there's actually a vote tomorrow to maybe close down the beaches because this past weekend was packed down there. So we'll see. Yeah, we're trying to follow social distancing uh, from the helicopter photos. Looks like maybe one too many people hit up Newport this weekend. So yeah, it uh, was wild. Yeah, so so we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully everyone's staying staying safe there in Newport, Huntington, all those great great beach spots. You you have a different perspective on this than maybe all of your teammates in this kind of delayed chance to play. We've talked about it a lot, but your injury last summer and it just, I was, I was just thinking before we talked about your last 12 months and it's like you couldn't have dreamt it up in, in the way it would unfold, right? You have this accident, you fight so hard to get back, you get back and then you have to wait. What's your perspective like that you can share with, with your teammates, with all the water polo fans in kind of that uncertainty of when you'll get to play again and how you fought through it? Yeah, sure. So South Korea, it was the end of July. We won world champs. We were out celebrating. Balcony collapsed. I got injured. And, you know, there was some, there was times, you know, a couple of days, even months that I didn't know what the future had in store for me. So in a weird way, obviously very different situations, but I felt similar emotions, you know, with uncertainty of the future. And if I was ever going to be able to play water polo again. So just working my way back um, has kind of given me a new perspective, obviously about sport, but life as well. So I think in a way it's, it's helped me during this crazy uncertain time that no one could have ever guessed or predicted. Uh, with that being said, it's, it's not easy. It stinks. I'm, I miss the team. I miss the sport and who knows what's going to happen in the future, but uh, we still have, you know, family and friends and, you know, that's what's most important. Talking with Kaylee Gilchrist here from the women's national team and Olympian uh, trying to make her second Olympic games with team USA in Tokyo next summer. I think people that know you and that follow you and, and interact with you uh, kind of see you as this fun-loving, easygoing person. You know, you're, you're very into kind of like the fun things in life in addition to your hard work in the pool. But through all these kind of struggles you've had over the last 12 months, you, you've been a bit more open about kind of, and, and this is cliche, I feel like we say it every talk that we're saying these cliches, but because it means something to people, we'll say it again. But you, you were one of those folks to admit like, hey, there are some days I don't, I don't feel okay with how things are going and the importance of, of talking about those things so that you can work through them. Yeah, I mean, this is also new to me, like you said. Um, obviously, I've had struggles in my life, but things have always seemed to work out for me. And after the injury, I just went straight into recovery mode. You know, I was put hours and hours into the mama mission is what Larnie Bokarian called it. And I was leaving my house at 515. I wasn't getting home until seven. So there wasn't much to dive into the mental, you know, I was just so focused on the physical. And once I finally got back to 100%, that allowed me with some more time to think about things. And I think that's when a lot of the mental aspects started coming up. And I actually, you know, lost Kobe Bryant, obviously it was tough for everybody, but he helped me out through the Mamba mission and became a mentor. And that was really tough and brought up just all kinds of emotions. And I actually struggled with a couple of panic attacks in Colorado Springs when we were training full, uh, during a training camp up there and basically like fainted in Adam's arms. And I was like, all right, I need to figure some things out. Like clearly I've been pushing things down and that's what has been my MO my entire life, you know, grind through stuff with a smile on my face. But I finally realized that, you know, there's, there's bigger things I need to deal with and I seek help. You know, I'm working with sports psych weekly and therapist weekly and just been really open about it because, you know, mental health is sometimes a tough discussion to talk about, um, but it's just so normal to have, you know, it's okay to not be okay. And I know a lot of people deal with it. So if I can help one person through this process, then it's, it's worth speaking out loud and speaking upon the topic. Yeah, you bring up a great point. I think that's a tough conversation to have because 
it's so different for every person and it's hard for everyone to kind of get your arms around what it what it means to you or to them or to someone else uh you mentioned kobe and and i, I think we're all in basketball mode right now if you're watching the michael jordan documentary and i and i feel very confident you are and you've seen yeah. some of the episodes um but two two parts about about kind of knowing him and i i guess the first question is you know on the positive side what is it you know you're you're a highly accomplished person but what is it like when someone who's up here like takes an interest in what you're doing and tries to lend support yeah i mean i i grew up before water polo and surfing it was basketball and kobe was my childhood hero and uh you know i dreamt of going to the WNBA and playing for the la spark so to have my first interaction with him was back in 2017 and to have that and go introduce myself and him know about our team and then follow me on social was like, I think I called all my friends and everyone knew how, how obsessed I was with him and how he was such a big athletic inspiration in my life. And, you know, in the past three years for that relationship to grow a little bit. And then obviously after my injury, him reaching out and giving some, some of his resources and some advice of how he overcame injury. It was just, if you told me that when I was eight years old and I was obsessed with the Lakers, you know, I wouldn't have believed you, but to me, it just shows like, and I'm just one of the few stories you hear about all the people he helped out. And to me, it just shows that there's so much we can do to help each other out and be a mentor for somebody out there. And you don't know how much it might actually mean to them. So I'll forever be grateful for, for that relationship and be able to try to continue the Mamba mentality. Yeah. I think I still have a text from you of the screenshot of when the Kobe Bryant has followed you notification came across on Instagram. And that was, that was a big day for everybody. Yeah, um, and ironically, like, I was just somehow on my phone, and I think I screenshot that at 24 seconds after he followed us. <laughs> so, like, yeah, meant to be. Meant to be. And then, you know, and I, this, is, this is something that I think sports fans are still dealing with, but then you go forward after the tragedy, and how, how do you try and keep it to be something that's positive and meaning for you, meaningful for you while you're also obviously like, grieving the loss of a friend? Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough and it even brought up emotions from Coach Barnett, who was a huge mentor also for me. It's my high school water polo coach. But, you know, their love of the sport and what they pass down to us is a reason to keep going. And, you know, the older I get, the more I realize it's not necessarily about the actual wins and losses in, in the sports, although I do get a kick out of making a sick play or passing a dime to my friends. But it's about the connections. And, you know, I love the connections and I, I love the team and I'm missing so many of the girls right now. Uh, we're, we're talking a little bit about, about hoops and uh, have, have you watched all, all four episodes so far of the, of the Michael Jordan documentary? Yes, I have. Yeah. So watching that, you know, I think like, uh, obviously, I know we both love basketball, so we'd, so we'd be glued to it regardless, but um is there, is there extra kind of joy for you having been on a team that's accomplished great things, watching that and just watching the intensity that Jordan had to try and bring out the best in everybody? Yeah, it's actually really cool. You know, I didn't get to see Jordan during his career. You know, I was too young. It was, it was about 98, so I was six years old. So you hear all these stories, but to get to see footage is pretty cool. And that's an inspiration and motivation in itself. But um, actually, a lot of us on the team are watching the episodes and we're chatting about them every Monday. So it's cool to just connect the dots, what's what's similar and what's different with our team to that Bulls team. And, you know, you can just learn so much about, obviously, water polo teams, other water polo teams, but of any sports teams. For people that are in your unique circumstance of being both a surfer and a water polo player, let's say they don't have beach or pool access. What are, what are some activities they can be doing to kind of stay in shape? Yeah, I think running is the best fitness wise and cardio wise i mean our sport demands so much fitness so i think running is what we've been doing um tim Pillow, our strength and conditioning coach has given us a nice little running program to do and we're also doing circuit body weight circuit training because a lot of us don't have access to to weights or obviously to gyms so that's just the way we're, we're trying to stay shape and stay positive and just i mean really working out is good for your overall mental well-being any, any new hobbies you've picked up? I saw there's a new member of the dog family, right? Yeah, so I got a new dog, Corgi Bryant, a.k.a. Splash. I was planning nice. on getting him when I was done with water polo, but I thought no better time to get a dog than in quarantine. Uh, my sister might not be the happiest. I saw she was on here, so shout out to Allie. <laughs> um, and then also, I've been playing the ukulele with Paige Hoschild and Larnie Bokarian. We have uke minutes about once a week, and 
That was a hobby I picked up when I got injured with Larnie and would make our Saturday sessions go for seven hours because half the time we're playing the ukulele. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's been my two hobbies, taking care of Splash and playing the uke. Uh, for those that follow Kaylee on Instagram, I think there's there's been a big drop off in alley content that we're all pretty bummed about where you just basically were torturing her every day at home with an inflatable basketball. So yeah, my sister and her husband are working from home and <laughs> I love to get under Allie's nerves. So I'm just chucking a basketball at her. I'll bring it back. Don't worry. Uh, we, you know, and, and, and I'm going to remind you here in the comments, we're talking a little bit about, about the Jordan and the Bulls documentary and before you cut off there, but just about kind of that. And really you look at the team you're on, it is, it is comparable to those late nineties Bulls as far as the record and the things you've won and just kind of the run the team has gone on. As you watch that, just kind of the comparisons and the thoughts about trying to achieve something great when everyone is trying to keep you from doing it, what is that like? Yeah, I mean, we know we have a target on our backs, and that's what comes when, you know, you've won in the past, and it makes it exciting. It's definitely some pressure to continue to succeed, but I think just with the group of girls we have, everyone pushes each other so hard, and our practices get pretty intense, and I think just that competition is, is what makes us great. And we actually had a chat today and uh, the question was posed, who is Dennis Rodman on the team? And <laughs> Aria, Rachel, Maggie, and Mel got some shout outs. Nice. <laughs> who is the Dennis Rodman? We'll expect some good uh, hair, hair coloring changes coming up soon uh, <laughs> out of all four of those then before. <laughs> You don't know when this next practice is going to be. We, we've talked over the last couple of weeks, and you were talking about kind of uh, mental wellness and, you know, and speaking up when, when you aren't feeling right. A lot of athletes have brought up the idea of being anxious or having anxiety because they don't know when the next game is going to be, and, then, and they don't feel ready for it. You know, water polo is a thing, as you know, if you're not doing it, right, you're, you're really losing that ability fast. How do you kind of tackle that? being ready when you know you probably don't feel ready. Yeah, I think it's important to just not turn your water polo mind completely off. I think this is a good time to slow down and to to spend some time that we neglect when we're in full-time training, you know, be with our family, be with our dogs, be home, help around the house, things like that. I know Maddie Musselman's cooking a bunch and Rachel's baking a bunch, things that we yes. don't get to do as often. Um, but at the same time, you know, as an athlete in the back of our mind is always our sport. And I think that's the importance of these Zoom meetings, our sports psych meetings, watching and talking about the last dance and just watching video from past games and being ready for when we do finally get to practice together. We'll, we'll slowly ease into it. Obviously, Adam's aware that if we jump right back into seven hours a day, you know, an injury could happen. And I don't, I don't think a game will be happening anytime soon. So with, with the training and the months to go before the games, I think we'll be ready when, whenever our first game may be. You, you and your teammates so often get asked the question, can you picture what it's going to be like on the podium? Or can you imagine what it would be like when you get a gold medal? And now it's like, can you imagine what it's going to be like to have that first practice back with all your friends? Yeah, we're so excited for that. That's what we keep talking <laughs> about. And we're just waiting. We have, we have a tentative date, but obviously it's going to depend on what, what happens, but we're, we're counting down. That's for sure. A lot of people stuck in their house right now. They're not going out a ton. Is there like a go to a go to like quarantine snack? Like, do you have like, like a couple of items that are just always around during these last few weeks? Um, not really. I guess I've just been making a lot more coffee at home. I usually go out and enjoy my coffees, but I found out today Alta, our local shop, coffee shop on my street opened back up. So definitely going to be splurging at Alta's. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Kaylee, really appreciate you taking some time here uh, in the midst of a road trip and your phone overheating and everything. Always good to catch up with you. Thanks, Masco. I'll talk to you soon.